All right, I just want a few minutes of your time tonight as I bring you a brief message. Uh, the, um, no, our focus is Christ and always has been, always will be. Um, but uh, almost the same text out of Matthew chapter 2 this morning uh, about the wise men uh, and, and how they came to the cross, how they, where they came and, and, and um, uh, how they approached, the Bible says, the house, the house when they came to the house, but uh, we must remember that he was born in a manger. Tonight's message very quickly is uh, the tre- treasures found in a shack. Treasures found in, any, anybody you're familiar with, um, oh, what would a show be, um, who are the two guys that kind of traveled the country and they, they found a bunch of stuff and, um, oh, American Pickers, there you go, American Pickers. You know, they didn't go really into palaces, they didn't really go into museums, where'd they go? They went into barns, they went into sheds, they went into trailers, uh, they went all kinds of places and they pulled out like some of the most inv- valuable things, um, that uh, many people just looked over. And, uh, uh, but one of the things that stuck out to me is they knew what they were, when they saw something that I would have just kind of looked over, it's because they had done research and they know where the value is. They know what's valuable. They know the market of people buying things. So I kind of thought about that and I'm like, you know, there are many things in life that are blessings that I simply just look over. There are many times I get blessed. There are many times that God sent in something my way and I just look over it and don't even realize that it's a treasure. Uh, and it's something that I have to be mindful of. But um, uh, when they followed the star to, I still believe it would be, even if they were in a house, it was a humble house. It wasn't, um, uh, you know, it wasn't in a, a, a f- very fluent neighborhood. It wasn't in a very um, uh, rich neighborhood, so to speak. It was probably just a humble home. But he was born in a shack and transferred to a humble home. I'm assuming a blue-collar home. His daddy was a, uh, a carpenter. Joseph was. Now, uh, in my introduction, I, I, I want to... I, I'll pose it this way. Have you, ever, have you ever noticed how life doesn't always turn out the way that you planned it to? Yeah? Some of you are like, oh, my life's going exactly the way I thought it would. Um, lucky you. Uh, it's not turning out the way you thought it was, and not only that, but it's not turning out the way you planned for it to. Um, so some of us, we just kind of put life on autopilot and say, what will be, what will be, and I'll just deal with it. And then there are others who, man, they've got their journal, they've got their plan book, they've got their schedule book, and they live by that, but they don't, nobody ever plans for the big bumps in the road. Nobody ever plan, nobody looks at that and says, I'm going to plan for tragedy in my life. But the Bible says that you, there will be. So it's something as Christians that we've got to plan for. So life doesn't turn out the way we want it to. And sometimes the circumstances in our life, they don't, all, they don't always um, follow our plans. Like Jesus said, not my will, not my will, not my will. Uh, and I have, um, I'm learning to say, Lord, not my will, but your will. I want the Lord's will to be done. Because ultimately... We'll give all the glory back to God anyway, and ultimately, he's the one we'll stand before anyway. I want, I want God's will to be done, and I want to be used as a vessel for him because I know that uh, uh, that's where ultimate glory and ultimate uh, uh, treasures and well done, thou good and faithful servant, that's where that lies. Now, <clears throat> many times it seems that life is nothing more than a series of what we would call broken dreams shattered dreams, dreams that we had, visions for our life that we had, and it's just filled with them. And uh, we get filled up with disappointment. We get filled up with um, heartache. We get filled up with um, uh, fatigue, where we just say, I'm going to try. I'm going to keep trying to work toward this. And the Bible says that hope, hope that is put off or hope deferred, what's it do? Anybody know that finish it? Makes the heart sick. It makes the heart sick. And if your heart's sick, you're sick. If your heart is sick, you're sick. Uh, But hope deferred, dreams put off, goals um, uh, that we didn't reach that we have to put off to another time, it makes the heart sick. Now, take into consideration these wise men. They'd spent the last couple of years maybe following a star. 
Uh, and to follow the star, they had to leave home. They had to leave, uh, they had to leave maybe, they, maybe they left their family behind. Um, they had to uh, uh, go out of their country and they faced uh, uh, all kinds of perils and obstacles that were in their way. You got to remember that there were lots of bandits and, and um, uh, what we would call modern day gangs. They were out in the deserts there and, and all kinds of people robbing and stealing. They had to face those things. Harsh weather. They found themselves in the presence of King Herod. And all of a sudden they found themselves out in the middle of nowhere. And then finally, through their journey, they arrived at their destination. They find, they find where the star stops and sets. Um, and what do they do? They go into a humble house, a humble beginning. Um, and these wise men, they, they probably dreamed of, we're going to find the Messiah. He's going to be, you know, in, 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 a, in a golden manger. We're going to, or not a, a manger, it wouldn't be a manger, a golden bassinet, you know. The Jesus Christ, the, or they didn't know his name at the time, the Savior is going to be surely in some magnificent setting. You've dreamed of that before, and I, and I have. Many times I'm told, hey, you're going to go uh, uh, as driving a truck, you're, this is the destination. And I think in my mind, okay, this destination, uh, in my mind I think of, um, uh, here, let's, let's name one, Kiln, Mississippi. I thought it would be what exactly I thought it would be. The middle of nowhere, backwoods, tight turns, um, alligators falling out of trees, iguanas attacking. I mean, you know, I don't know. Um, uh, but um, people speaking English in a dialect I've never heard before. Um, and they did. I got down to, um, I would guess it would be northeast Tennessee. And these folks were talking. And he was blah, blah, blah and along. And I'm like, mm-hmm, yep. Ha, ha, ha. I got no idea what he's saying. Uh, I don't understand a word these guys were saying, you know. And um, uh, so sometimes you, you envision something. You think something's going to be one thing, and you get there, and it's completely another. I wonder if these wise men were um, in their hearts like, what, this can't be. Really? And then before they knocked on the door of the house, they're like, that's where the star stopped? Are we sure? Are we sure? And they knock on the door. I hope nobody answers. <laughs> yeah, um, did you guys, is, are you Mary? Yeah, well, is this where the Savior is? Where Jesus, where, they don't know his name, but the Messiah? You know, and she's like, yeah. And they're like, oh, are you sure this is the place? And many times this, that happens in your life. God has a plan for your life and, and you arrive at a destination in your life and you're like, is this it? Is this where you want me? Because this doesn't, this doesn't seem right. And sometimes it's exact. not sometimes, if you're in the will of God, it's exactly where he wants you. Exactly where he wants you. And, and, and if you'll just continue to pursue after the Lord, he'll continue to lead you. Now, um, I want to, uh, just three points tonight. Number one, number one, wise men recognize God in the shacks of life. Wise men recognize God in the shacks of life. Now, in the context here, it, it, it wasn't what they expected. Uh, but when they came to see the Savior and worship the Savior, that's what they were there for, they did it. They saw God in that humble home. They saw God in that home uh, that uh, didn't stand out, wasn't anything special, but they saw God there. And wise men, wise men, see Jesus in all the obstacles and circumstances of life. See, there's not a time where God, Jesus isn't present. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So there's not a time where Jesus isn't present with you. He's omnipresent He's ho and he's sovereign. He's always with you. And no matter the circumstances that you're in or you're going through, Christ Jesus is with you. So when life comes along and takes a... Uh, uh, a, uh, is like a bull in a china shop and life shatters your dreams and life takes away um, what you thought you were going to do with your life and you have to redirect, your very first duty is to find Jesus Christ in the circumstance. Your very first job is to find Jesus in the circumstance. No matter what you're going through, no matter the hardship, no matter, the, no matter what you're going through. Now I want you to listen to me. Your first job is to find Jesus in the hard times. 
So when you have a goal, when you have a dream, and life comes and topples it over and knocks it over and robs you of what you thought was yours, which wasn't yours, you've been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your members. So when life steals away your plans, find God in it. Find God in it. What does the Bible say? That the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The Bible says that, um, oh Lord, I know not the way, I know not the way of man, or the man doesn't know his way. God has to direct my steps. Oh Lord, help me direct my steps. I don't know where I'm going. And the Bible says that um, uh, God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And many times in life, I'm telling you, I'm so tired of going, I feel like I go down life's highways and I miss an exit. I'm like, doggone it. I just did that um, uh, three trips, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, no, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, Fort Wayne to Youngstown, Fort Wayne, Youngstown, Ohio, um, real close to, to Pennsylvania. Uh, and uh, the second day, they took away my exit to seven, on 76 East to get on to, to I-80. And they took away my exit. <sighs> so what did I have to do? I had to go up and get on 77 North and take that and to get on to 76 East, uh, which was a, a not that big of a deal, but I wasn't the only one doing that. There were hundreds of cars doing that. So what I had to do, get in line and wait my turn. I hate that. I hate it. Can't stand it. It's like an ant farm. And I am totally like, if everybody's going one way, I want to go the other. Like, I'm a, it's my, my rebel gene. Um, I, that's what I want to do. And sometimes life does that to me. I'm going down the road, and life's going my way, and the plans are falling into place, and all of a sudden, the exit's closed. The exit's closed, or I miss it. And so what I got, I got to go up and take the next exit. And God says, nope, that's not the, that's not the exit I want for you. There's another exit up there that's going to get you back on track over here. And I don't like the, God's timing some, all the time. Because I think God should operate on my time. Now, God, blessings now, payday now, help give me the answers now. But the more that I walk with God, the more that I talk with God, the more that I, I try to know God, know Jesus, I realize I must decrease and he must increase. As John the Baptist said, I must fade into the background and he must shine forth but not with the exclusion of me. Please understand, it's, there's, there's, I, there's two natures in me. There's the Jake Jackson nature, which he, that guy better never get loose. <laughs> uh, and, then there's the J, and then there's Christian Jake, spiritual Jake, saved Jake, Christian Jake, the Jake that, that um, uh, the, the Lord wants to use and do something with. So, it's not that I, I become a nothing and I'm a nobody. It's taking that old nature that I am and setting him aside and letting Jesus shine through me and be through me. And uh, that's not something you just flip a switch on. That is a lifelong journey. That is a, something you'll always learn, but if you're in pursuit of it, you'll continue to gain it. But, but when you run into these, these obstacles in your life that, shattered dreams and, and, and broken hopes and goals that are gone and things that you can't, you, you don't think you can accomplish. But just because the door is closed on it now doesn't mean the door won't be on, opened on it later. You see, we have a God that does the impossible. And when Jesus Christ came, he came humbly. When he died, he died humbly. When he was buried, he was buried humbly. But boy, when he comes back, he's coming back and shaking the earth. He's coming back with glory. But wise men, and not just these wise men, but wise men, see God in the poor times, in the poverty times of life. So when life comes along and shatters your dreams, your first duty is to find God. First duty is is to find God. Number two, number two. Wise men give gifts in the shack of life. Use your gifts when times are tough. The best way to get ahead in life is to do right when it's easy not to do anything at all. Is to do what you're supposed to do. Show up. You know one of the hardest times to be a pastor was right when COVID hit and nobody was coming to church. I could have easily, that could have been an easy time for me to say, you know what, I'm, 
This pastor, maybe, maybe, I could have I schmoozed it up, Mr. Pip. I could have said, no, this was God's sign. He's closing the door. Doesn't want me to be a pastor. I could have easily have done that. Because it wouldn't have had a bit. I, I, number one, I didn't have to, have to face everybody who voted me in because they weren't coming to church. I wouldn't have had to look them in the eye. They were all kind of, we were all dispersed. But I didn't. We didn't. You know what we did? We said, hey, you want to come to church? Come to church. If, if, you, if, you, if you got something going, you're too afraid, you don't know. And I don't mean like I'm, 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 not, I'm, bu- I'm not busting your knuckles on being afraid. If you don't know and you just say, you know what, it's best. I think it's best if we stay home. We already have ailments. We're more susceptible. And some people get COVID and they get it worse than others. Just like some people get the flu and they get it worse than others. I get that. Some people are, they, they get sicker than other people. So if, you, if you're elderly or if you already have some sort of problems, I, I'm not hating on you. I got nothing, but I'm saying I'm having church. The doors are open. If, you, if you're healthy enough to be here, be here. Let's have, the Bible says two or three. We got me, Lucas, and Dan. All right, there we go. Boom. Two or three gathered in the, uh, there I am, gathered in the midst of them. We kept doing what was right. I don't have a bunch of gifts, but the gifts that I do have, I brought them to Christ. You, know, you notice the wise men, they didn't bring they didn't bring bags. They didn't bring boxes. They didn't bring crates. They didn't Amazon stuff in and UPS stuff in. They brought, they brought what they had. They got something nice. They got gold and frankincense and myrrh, just like the Song of Solomon chapter 3 prophesied. Um, uh, 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 they brought what they had. I tell you, bring what you have. No, I asked Brother Alex, uh, uh, hey, man, why don't you join the choir? No, no. That's not a gift I can bring, he said. No, I'll stand up there with my songbook and sing. But I'm not joining the choir. I said, okay. You know what gift he does have? He has a gift to, of, te- uh, of, and he does, he, he says he doesn't, but he's got more than probably most of us in this room. Uh, a general idea, and he can uh, study and, sh- and troubleshoot um, technology and different things like that. And he's a, been a blessing to this church. He's been a blessing. Uh, Brother Kevin, he's like, oh, look, I know the basics. I'll lead this thing in. I'll, I'll just get up there and wave my hand, and we'll sing the songs, and I can carry a tune, and we'll lead everybody. Miss Jennifer, she's not over there, you know. Um, Ray Charles on the piano. She's not all right. She, she's not, but what's she doing? She's doing what she can do. She's doing what she can do. Wise men give their gifts to the Lord. Wise men give their gifts to the Lord. Now, it would have been uh, incredibly easy for these wise men to have turned around, packed up, and go home, Right? You, you ever play with that kid who takes his ball and goes home? I'm taking my ball and going home. You, know, you can go home, but you're leaving the ball. <laughs> you're leaving the ball. Or you're not going home. <laughs> we will tie you to that. if you Anyway. Uh, uh, it, 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 and you get with people who, who just, well, I don't, it's not my way, or I don't like, and they just pack up, and they, they suck their thumb, and they tuck their tail between their legs, and they leave because... I don't like, I don't, I don't have it my way. And they just pout. Well, these wise men, man, it was a long journey. It took all kinds of time. They had to, to, to pack and journey all this way. <clears throat> they could have packed up and went home and said, hang all this. I'm not doing this. And honestly, come on, who could have blamed them? Who could have blamed them? If Jesus, if there was some, if we lived in those times, would you have packed up and left your family and went that long? I tell you what, uh, I went to, in 2018, I went to Houston, Texas for three weeks, and I about lost my mind. I need to be home. I want to be home. I like my stuff. And they set us up. Man, they put us in one of those, um, they put us in a sweet, sweet uh, kitchen, uh, king-size room, uh, family, uh, not family room, but a living room. Set us up, paid us fat money, too. It's perfect, but I didn't, I didn't care. That, that's all nice. So, I mean, that's great. Incredible breakfast every morning. It's great. But I didn't care. I wanted to be home. Man, I couldn't imagine leaving home for several years. Imagine fel- fellows that, and, and gals now who go to war and they're away or people that, that sign up in the military and they get shipped away from their family from t- some time. I mean, that'd be hard to do. Could you blame these wise men, if they, or these, these fellows, if they went home? Could you blame them if, if they turned around? Now, we can't blame them because many of us have turned around before. Many of us have said, I can't do this anymore. It's not turned out the way we planned. This journey's not going the way we thought. Goodness gracious, how far away is that star? When is that star going to park itself and shine down? Where is this place? 
Folks, they didn't have GPS. They didn't have Google Maps. They didn't have, um, what was that one back in the day where we, you'd type it in the computer and it would print it out? MapQuest. Map, we didn't have a MapQuest. They knew to follow the star. Follow the star. Man, if I went to work and they said, all right, Jake, you're going to um, Wilder, Kentucky, and then turning around and going to um, uh, Seaman, Ohio, but we want you to follow the sun. And then, but wait till it gets dark enough so you can follow the stars. And here's a chart. I'd be like, new applications, please. <laughs> I'm not doing this. Um, uh, GPS, they, man, what they do? They follow the star. They follow the star just by faith. And when I think about them following the star, I think about the children of Israel following the pillar of cloud and, 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 and the pillar of fire that the Lord put before them, following the star, following the star. So they bring their gifts to the Lord. What did they give Jesus? What they give him? They gave him gold, they gave him frankincense, and they gave him myrrh. But can I tell you something? Those were already his. They gave him something he already owned. Like Christmas time, I now understand what it is being a dad, or being a parent for that matter, and bringing in the income, and the kids want to get you something for Christmas, but they don't have an income, so where do they get money to buy you a gift? You. It's already yours. It's yours. And you're giving it to them to go buy you a gift? That's okay. And that's what that was. Jesus already owned those things. They were already his. He already owns it all. And not only did the wise men bring gifts to Jesus uh, 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 that, uh, the, that the gifts were already his, Jesus owned those wise men. Jesus owns it all. It's all his. So whatever gift you have, it's not yours. It's Jesus's. If you have the ability of administration, it's Jesus's. If you have the ability to, to sing and to play instruments, that ability should be used for the Lord. If you have the ability to teach, that should be used for the Lord. If you have the ability to sing, that should be used for the Lord. If you have the ability to wrench on a bus and mechanics and technology and maintenance on buildings and wiring and electricity, uh, uh, electricity and, and, and carpentry, use those gifts for the Lord. They're not yours anyway. If you use those gifts to make a buck, and you don't give those bucks that you earned with the talent that God gave you to give back to him, it's stealing from him. Twice, you're stealing the tithe and you're stealing the talent. That's not yours. Give it to God. Give it to God. Wise men give gifts in the shacks of life. So when you, when, um, uh, 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 so when you uh, find yourself, the, the star in your life is parked under a shed, a shack, and you're not living in the big house you used to live into, live in, and you're not driving the nice cars that you used to drive, and you're just kind of in the valley of life, remember that that's the time to be faithful in giving. That's the, that's the time to be faithful in giving because if you give to the poor, and you are poor, but you're faithful, if you, your Bible says you lend to the Lord and God will repay. When you lend to God, God will turn around and make sure you're taken care of. He always does. Most people's responses to the shack of life is, I stop giving when my life gets a little more difficult. I stop giving when you get in a shack situation. When you get in a shed situation. When life becomes tight and they say you got to tighten the belt. You know, God is not concerned about inflation. God's not concerned about inflation because God owns it all anyway. I truly don't believe uh, Donald Trump will be president again. I don't think he'll, I, he may get the nomination, but I don't, I don't know that he's going to win again. I just, and maybe that's just the ebb and flow of politics in the country right now because he's, they're not, he's not being spoken of as much. He's kind of being put into the background. But even, if, you know, I was thinking about this morning, Joe Biden's president because God allowed him to be. Donald Trump was president because God allowed him to be. All these guys, they, they think it's because of them and their winning personality. No, it's because God allows you. Putin is, is, is uh, the ruler of Russia because God allows him to be. God allows him to be. The same air, the same oxygen that all these that communists breathe and that all these liberals breathe and all the conservatives breathe, the same air that God allows me to breathe. It's all the same. And when inflation is up and a gallon of milk is, 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 is pushing five bucks a gallon and gas keeps going up and down and, and your, your utilities are up and everything is up, 
That's not the time to say, okay, God, I can't give to you anymore. And I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes, but we, we stop giving to God. We stop giving to missions. We stop giving to ministry, but we can still pay for Disney Plus, those bunch of perverts. Yeah, I said a bunch of perverts. Somebody say amen. amen. Perverts. Child exploitation. Forcing uh, transgenderism. Amen. Forcing homosexuality. Amen. Don't watch that trash. And exposing your children to it. It's normal. No, it's rotten sin. But we can pay for those things. We can, we can, we can pay and, and to, for entertainment, but we can't pay to pay, buy a Bible for a kid in Africa. We can't give money to um, uh, 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 Don Berg and uh, uh, Joe Landingen, or, or Brother Landingen, and Eddie Gallion, and uh, Brother Sigstead, and all these folks who have gone through this church who are on the mission field to help buy Bibles and put food on their table and, and, it, and, and to keep them on the mission field. That's the purpose. Where does mission money go? It goes to the missionary to keep them on the mission field, to pay their rent, to keep them there. And we say, sorry, God, I'm in the shack of life. And since I have this shack, this is all I have. I deserve at least a little comfort. I deserve a, at least a, a little bit of something for me. And God says, no, less of you and more of me. Because if you let me take the steering wheel, I can take care of you. And I can give you more in abundance than you ever thought or saw. If we would just give over to God. Who's at the helm, Brother Pip? Who's at the helm in your life? Wise men, make sure to give gifts to God when life isn't as grand as it used to be. Wise men received back far more than they gave away. Wise men always received back from God more than they gave away. And I'm not, I've watched my parents give away everything out of compassion and out of, why are you doing that? And now they look back and go, why did we do that? Why did we do that? But uh, whether they receive it here or in heaven, they will receive more than they gave. You will always receive more than you give. My dad always said, if you give a spoonful, God will give a spade. If you give a spade, God will give a shovel. If you give a shovel, God will give a wheelbarrow. You give a wheelbarrow, God will give you a, 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 um, a pickup truck full. You give God a pickup truck, he'll give you a dump truck. You can't outgive God. Please understand that. You cannot outgive God. And when you give to the things of eternity, God says, that's something I can, that's somebody I can use. That's somebody I will use. And that's somebody I'll use to flow through. And that's, I'm telling you, the more that you ask of God and the more that you give out, the more God will give you. These, these wise men let, walked away with more than they gave. And that's always the case with God. No man can ever outgive God. No man can, every man can try, but those who die, do find themselves abundant in what God can supply. The surest way to get a blessing, get this, the surest way to get a blessing is to be a blessing. The surest way to get a blessing is to be a blessing to somebody. I'm telling you, I, I take it, I do not take it for granted. I hope that you understand this, that the thoughts that go through my mind, I think of just random times people have been a blessing to me. Just they walk up. I was thinking of Mrs. Eights the other day, Miss Rhonda Carter's mother, who's passed away and is in heaven now. She'd walk out several times, several times, and put a $20 bill in my hand. And she'd say, you're one of my favorite preachers. You're one of my favorite preachers. And that's humbling to me because she must not listen to a lot of preachers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's humbling to me. People who have given me cards and given me gifts, and uh, I, I shy away from that stuff. I don't want the spotlight. Um, I, I, I'm, I don't want the attention um, because there's hate that comes with attention. You know, but there's also blessings from God. And I want my message, I want the messages that I get from the word of God uh, and from all kinds of great books that have been written by all kinds of pastors and evangelists who there's so much meat out there. I want to pull things out to be a blessing to our church. And do you know conviction can be a blessing if the end of the result is getting right with God? Conviction is a blessing because that's the Holy Spirit saying, get right with me. 
Get right with me. Wise men bring gifts. And then number three, number three. Wise men receive grace in the shed time of life. When we feel like we're in the, the dog house. When, man, we're like, man, I thought life would be better than this. You look back on your life and you say, man, I should have went to school. I should have went to college. I should have got a degree. I should have went to trade school. I should have listened to my parents. And you can't, you're past that. You're past that. And I, I know there's some lady, I can't remember how, a 90 or 99 years old that just graduated from college. I mean, that's all well and good and stuff, but what are you going to do with it? Uh, God bless you, but I mean, cool. Uh, you stayed busy. You know, I'm all for that. I'm not, I, I'm not against it, but, the, you know, let's be practical. Um, uh, we receive grace in the hard times of life. Uh, I won't read it, but Hebrews 12, 6 and Revelation 3, 9, these verses, they're trying, it's Jesus, he's trying to reveal himself to you in a new way. You know, what I said at, at closer to the beginning of the message is when life hits hard, try to find Jesus in it. What is Jesus doing? God is working in you. Please understand that. Tonight, right now, at this very moment, God is working in you for you to become like his son, to be transfigured and changed to the image of his dear son. No matter what it takes, no matter what it is, God is taking you and molding you. There's a song, or it's, a, it's not a song, but it's, it's a scripture, it's a song based off of scripture in Jeremiah, where God is the potter and I am the clay. Make me, mold me to what you want me to be. That's really hard to do, isn't it, Kirsten? That's hard to do. Monty Watts, I bet that was hard to do. God, if you, uh, uh, Monty Watts was from an iron lung. He wrote a book from an iron lung to a pulpit. Anybody know what an iron lung is? An iron lung is a steel circuit, a cylinder that they place your body in, it's compression levels and whatnot. Um, uh, I don't understand all of it, but I know that he was a kid and he was in it and his childhood was robbed from it. Well, I'll say robbed from him because God was building a future. God took his childhood to build him a future. See, God may have taken something, Kirsten, to build your future. God may build your future. Just because you're elderly doesn't mean God doesn't have a future laid out for you. Just because you can't get around like you used to, or maybe you have a hard time, maybe you have severe ADD, and you say, well, I mean, folks, we grew, I, we grew up, didn't, we didn't believe in that. It was like, spank your kid and they'll be fine. Come to find out, some kids do have an issue. <laughs> and I was one of them. But I think you beat it out of me. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I think I still have it. Um, and just little things. Um, but you may have... Um, Issues and health problems and all kinds of uh, depression and a bad, a bad past. You came from a bad home and you, man, and it's affected the way you grew up. And you're like, man, life has been difficult for me. It's not been fair for me. But if you'll remember God in the hard times, you'll find, try to find God in the hard times. God gives grace to those people. God will gra give grace to you. Now, uh, while those wise men were there, they were, I think they experienced two kinds of grace. Two kinds. Number one, saving grace. Saving grace. They just met the Savior. They just met Jesus. I'm like, I'm, I, I don't know how to feel, react that one day I'm going to meet Jesus. <laughs> I'm kind of like, what am I going to do? Am I going to like fall down? Am I going to like kneel? Night me, Lord. Is he gonna, I, am I gonna kneel? Am I gonna fall prostrate? Am I gonna cry? Am I gonna hug him? Can, am I allowed to touch you? Um, what can I, what am I gonna do? Am I, am I gonna get in line? Jesus, will you sign my Bible? I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know one day I'm gonna see Jesus. And those wise men, they saw Jesus saving grace. And number two, number two, this one that's, that follows me through my life and will follow you is sustaining grace sustaining grace. God saved them, and then he will direct your life. Please understand that God did not just save you 
for you not to go to hell. He didn't just save you for you not to go to he- or for you to get to go to heaven. He saved you so he could use you to bring glory to his son and bring glory to him to use you. And, and if you'll set yourself aside and let God use you, you'll watch your life just change. There will be hardships, there'll be hard times, there'll be mountain peaks, and there will be valleys, but it will be worth it all when we see Christ. So when our, st- when our star in our life leads us to a shack, when we expect to find God's grace in the hour that we need, the Bible says that we will. So life is... um. Would anybody say the life is fair? I wouldn't. Because there are good there are good people who suffer unfairly in my in my opinion, and there are bad people who get away with murder. And we call them politicians. And we call them stars and athletes and uh, celebrities and artists and just oh regular folks just old regular people, your neighbor, great or, or wicked, bless you. Why does life seem that way? Why do the wicked seem to prosper and the righteous seem to, to suffer? That's not fair. No, life isn't fair. And life isn't what we think it ought to be. But even when life lets us down, and it will, you can be sure that God will never let you down. God will never, no, not ever, never let you down. He will always come through, always come through. Now, you can abandon ship. You can be like those wise men and say, hang it, I'm not walking this way. I'm going to go do my own thing. And you can sacrifice the altar or, or sacrifice the future on the altar of the immediate. And you can have your goodness now. Lucas and I just watched a video this afternoon about the rich man in hell and Abraham and Lazarus um, uh, uh, in, in, in paradise. And, and he said, let, 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 let um, uh, 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 Lazarus come and dip his tongue in water and touch the tip of my tongue. And, and Abraham said, we can't do that. You know, you're there. You had the good things in life you experienced all the good that you could and now you suffer and Lazarus went through all the bad and now he's in heaven now I want you to understand for anybody that may see this on social media just because you suffer on earth doesn't mean you get to go to heaven and just because you had good things on earth doesn't mean you go to hell The one deciding factor that determines whether you go to heaven or hell is if you have believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God, and that name is Jesus. That name is Jesus. The one born of Mary in the the barn in Bethlehem, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. And that same God who gave us the gift of Jesus is the same God who will give you grace in your darkest hours. Grace for Kinsey. Grace for Caden. Grace for Kirsten, grace for Jim, grace for Miss Sarah, grace for Brother Alex, grace for everybody on this side, grace for everybody on that side, grace and a help and a help in time of need. I've been, I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm needy. <laughs> I'm needy. As a child of God, I am high maintenance. I'm always going to God going, dear God, can I have? Dear God, can we go? Dear God, can we? I'm like a little kid at the store with his mom. Can I have this? Can I have that? No, no, no. I'm, well, I'm going to ask for everything until you say yes. Because you're going to say yes about something. Uh, and, and eventually, what I start asking for are the things he wants me to ask for. When I start saying, dear God, can I have this? And it's for me. Dear God, can I have that? And it's for, you know, my, my, my uh, I don't mean lust or, or my carnal, you know, not wickedness, but just stuff. My comforts, and God says, no, that's not what I want for you. No, that's not what I want for you. You know, it's when the kid starts asking for the grapes and the celery. Put some peanut butter on there. Uh, and, and the tomatoes and the peppers. God says, I want what's good for you. I want what's good for you. The fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit. It's not that God is anti-junk food. <laughs> it's just that he wants our diets to be the fruit. Fruits of the Spirit, love, goodness, patience, kindness, brotherly kindness, um, um, temperance, love, charity, above all, amen. He wants us to have these things. 
So when I go through life and, and life seems to blacken my eye and knock me down and then kick me while I'm down and life seems to be unfair, God will always extend his grace. He will always be there. So when your star lands on the shack and you come to a stop in life, we can expect God to provide his leadership when we feel lost. Uh, so as God's children, anybody in here God's child, if you're saved and you know it, raise your hand. If you're saved and you know it, raise your hand. Good. Good, okay. So as God's children, please understand this. You aren't ever alone. You aren't ever alone. Um, and we're never, ever without a recourse in life. God will always guide us. God will always make a way for us. He'll always support us through these, these, um, these, these poor times, these barn times, these shed times, these shack times of life. So have you ever um, been following direction, so to speak? You've been following a star and you wound up at a shack in life? You followed a dream and it led to a stinking dead end? How disappointing is that? You followed what you thought was something and then all of a sudden, erg, stop, no, empty. That's happened a lot to me. That's happened plenty of times where I'm like, oh, is that from God? Is that a star from God? Let me go follow that. And it ends up at a shack. Well, where's the good in that? God, I invested time and money and effort and investment and all kinds of things into this. God says, I, I've, there's a treasure there. There's a treasure there. So maybe you're there right now. Maybe you're there at this very moment. And if so, I want to tell you that Jesus has your back in the shack. That rhymed. Jesus has your back. And he's working on you, and he's working on your behalf. He is concerned about your need. So tonight, I'm not going to have an invitation. Miss Jennifer, will you come, please? What I'm going to do is say my last sentence here, pray, and then we'll be dismissed. So uh, uh, God is concerned about your need, First Peter 5, 7. So why don't you do what the wise men did? You say, what did the wise men do? They fell down before him, and they worshiped him. I don't, now, what constitutes you falling down before him? I would just say you find a quiet place that you can make yours. I don't care if it's there right on your couch at 5 o'clock in the morning before the house is up or 6 or whatever. You're up. You say, hey, I'm going to get up uh, 40 minutes earlier than the house does because I need to go talk to the Lord. And you make a place that's yours, and you fellowship with him, and you worship him. You worship him, just like those wise men did. Those wise men left with more than what they, than they thought they were going to see. They left with salvation, and they left with sustaining salvation because of what they brought. Folks, the hard times of life, God hasn't left you. The disappointing times of life, God hasn't disappeared, and that's not your reward. Brother Hiles preached a message. It's, uh, I'd like to make it my own one day. I'll, I'll preach it maybe one day. It's just too good of a truth. But it's called the, the treasure is in the field. The treasure is, anybody heard that message before? The treasure is in the field. And he talked about uh, a man found treasure in a field and he went to go dig it up. But then, you know, he found some trash in the field and some weeds in the field and uh, maybe a, a varmint or two in the field and, and just some undesirable things in the field. And he said, well, I don't want that field because it's got bad things in it. Because it doesn't look as, as appealing as it, I, I think it should. And we throw away the whole field. We, and we throw away all the treasure that's in the field. Just because of a few bad things. Don't throw away the fields of your life. Because there are treasures in them. The fields of your life is your marriage, your, your, your children, your relationships. A, a career possibility. Just because you get in a career and it's not exactly what you thought it was, put your head down put in, and work. Work at it. Become the best person at that job where they can't, they, you are no longer deniable. You just, do, you just put your head down and work as unto the Lord and let God work until God moves you, until God opens a door to something else. But when life is hard and the fields are cluttered with undesirable things and we find ourselves in the shack of life, don't forget to look for Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for all that you've done for us, all that you are doing.
You know what the Bible says? That where you are, we may be also. And he says, you go to prepare a place for us. Heavenly Father, I look forward to that. I can't imagine. I hath not seen, and ear hath not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And Lord, I, I, I think I love you, and I want to love you more. I love you enough to believe in you. I love you enough to receive the Son. I believed on Jesus. Lord, I love you, and I say, thank you for loving me first. Thank you for loving me first. Lord, without you, I died and went to hell. I'd be on my way to hell right now. I'd be jamming out with ACDC on the highway to hell. And Lord, thank you so much for opening my eyes. Thank you so much for the opportunities that you have given to us where we don't just have to live lackluster lives, but we can do something real, something for eternity, have a lasting effect. Lord, my name may not be written down in the Hall of Fame. It may not be written down in the annals of history, but my name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'd not rather have it written anywhere else. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for that, that your promises stand true throughout the ages. Lord, I'd ask that you'd help us tonight as we travel, as we go home, and all the Christmas things that we have to do. Lord, I'd ask that you'd help us not to forget you. Help us to see you in all that we do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.